Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you are new, thanks for stopping by. I'm glad to have you. I hope you'll consider subscribing. Uh, like and share my videos and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box for you below. So today we are going to get our gingerbread men fixed the easy way. We are going to make gingerbread bars. These are so much easier than making the little guys, rolling them out and cutting them out and all that. Um, although there is a place for those and if you are interested in that type of a recipe I do have one and I will link it here for you and also in the description box below They're fun to make and totally delicious great to do with little ones But if you're in a hurry and you just want something fun the bar cookie is the way to go It's so much easier. We're gonna be making these in a 9 by 13 inch pan So you want to start with your 9 by 13 inch pan and make sure you spray it really well with some cooking spray so make Make sure you prepare your pan, preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and then we can mix them all together. I'm going to bring you in close and we're going to get started. Okay guys, we have all the traditional flavors going on here, but first we're going to start by um, combining all of our dry ingredients. So I, in my bowl, I have two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. I like to use the fluff and scoop method. Um, so you could either do it that way or you can always um, spoon it in and then level it off with a knife. To that, we are going to add a half of a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, and then we're gonna add our spices. Ginger is the star of the show here, so we're gonna be adding a teaspoon and a half of ginger. You can determine how much spice you want in these. This is kind of a, the blend that I'm gonna use and the amounts that I'm using are just a nice ginger neutral flavor. They're not too gingery, not too spicy, but yet they do have plenty of flavor to them. But so if you think you want more, you can always add more. So we want a teaspoon and a half of ginger. That is the star of the show after all. To that, we're going to add one teaspoon of cinnamon. We're going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. and a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cloves. Now cloves are pretty spicy, so I wouldn't go too overboard with your cloves here. Okay, once you have all your dry ingredients in your bowl, just go ahead and take a whisk and whisk them together so that they're nicely blended. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. And you can use a stand mixer or you can use, obviously use a, a hand mixer. I like to use my stand mixer and we need one and a half sticks of butter. That's three quarters of a cup. You wanna make sure that it is softened to room temperature. To that, we are going to add one cup of packed light brown sugar. and a quarter of a cup of molasses, unsulfured molasses. Okay, we're gonna cream all that together. Start off low and then turn it up to about a medium, medium low speed until that's nicely blended. Okay, after two to three minutes, after it's well creamed, and you'll be able to tell because it will start to lighten in color, you're gonna to wanna to scrape down your bowl a little bit. Then we are going to add one egg. Make sure your egg is at room temperature. And we're going to add two teaspoons of good vanilla extract. You guys know me, if you've been around my channel very long, I like to use my homemade vanilla extract. And we want about two teaspoons. I'm very generous with my vanilla because I love the vanilla flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix that for another minute or so. Okay, once everything is well blended, now we are going to add our dry ingredients to our wet ingredients. And you just want your mixer on a low speed. You never wanna over mix cookies or they'll be tough. Stop. 
slowly add your flour to your wet ingredients and just mix just until they're combined. And it only takes a minute or so. Some flour up there. Okay, once it starts to come together, scrape down your beater. Okay, what I like to do, you saw that I had a little bit of flour stuck on the top of my paddle attachment. So we wanna make sure it's all well incorporated. So I like to take um, a spatula and just really give everything a good a mix just to make sure, just go up under in the bottom and make sure you don't have any dry flour patches. Just a couple of times is good enough. And then you have this beautiful dough. So we're going to go ahead and spread this in our prepared pan. It smells good already and all we've done is mix it together. So just take your spatula and spread that out. Okay. Once you have it spread out pretty well, it's a pretty sticky dough, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It will go ahead and finish spreading as it bakes. We're gonna pop it into a preheated 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. We just want it to barely start getting golden brown around the edges. So I'm gonna pop it in the oven, and when we are done, I'll bring you back. Okay guys, our bars are all done. Um, you want to make sure that they're cooked through, but you'd wanna try not to overbake them because then they can be, be, have a dry texture to them and we don't want that. So you're really just looking for them to kind of spring back when you touch them in the middle. Um, and mine took a little bit longer than 15 minutes this time. It took about 17, 18 minutes. So you'll just have to keep an eye on them once you get to the 15 minute mark and just check them. And like I said, when you touch them, they should want to spring back in the middle. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to set those aside and let them cool completely. Okay, with these bars, most often you will see them made with a cream cheese frosting. And that is totally delicious, obviously. Cream cheese frosting is to die for. But I wanted them to be, um, I wanted to be able to keep them at room temperature. If you frost them with a cream cheese frosting, you have to keep them in the refrigerator. I wanted something that would be more shelf stable, if you will, um, and be safe to leave out on the counter. So I'm going to show you how to make just a really delicious, basic, uh, creamy vanilla frosting to go on top of these. That's going to be fantastic. If you want to make the cream cheese version, I will leave it in the description box below, the ingredients and how to do that. But for today's purposes, like I said, I want to be able to leave them out. And I also would like to be able to gift them. Things that you have to refrigerate are a little trickier to gift um, than things that are stable at room temperature. So I'm gonna show you how to make my frosting that you can use to leave them at room temperature. In my opinion, it's pretty close to being just as good as a, a cream cheese frosting. Cream cheese frosting is just a little bit better. In this case, being able to leave them out is more important to me than them being elevated with having a cream cheese frosting. Oh my goodness, you guys, the house smells so good from baking those. Natural air freshener, right? One of the reasons why I love making gingerbread in any form is because it makes your whole house smell like Christmas. So anyway, let's get on to the frosting. Um, pretty very basic ingredients here, very easy. Again, you can use your stand mixer or you can use a hand mixer, it doesn't matter. But we're going to use one stick of butter or a half a cup of butter, oops almost lost it. Um, if you came along with me for making the raisin bread, you'll be familiar with this uh, frosting. This is basically the same frosting that I made for that, just in a bigger batch. And then to that, we are going to add three cups of powdered sugar. Okay, we're gonna start mixing that together. So just start off on low speed so that you don't shower yourself in powdered sugar. And to that, 
we are going to add a full tablespoon of vanilla extract. You can add more if you want to, add less if you want to, but I like vanilla. So I add at least a tablespoon to mine. And then we're going to start adding some milk. I would just do a teaspoon or so at a time. We want a thicker frosting, so you don't want it to be too thin. Once it all starts to come together, then you wanna raise your speed to medium. make sure you get it all nice and creamy. So you wanna mix it for about a minute or two. Okay, once it's well mixed, you want to um, take a spatula and just kind of check the, check the texture of it to see if it's too stiff or too loose. You wanna be able to spread it, but you want it stiff enough that it will, it will sit up. I think I could use just a touch more milk, maybe a half to one teaspoon. So it should be nice and creamy, but you don't want it super loose. I think that's pretty good, and then I always taste it. Make sure we have enough vanilla in there. I think that that is pretty good. So I'm gonna set this aside. We're going to let our gingerbread bars cool completely before we frost them. And then we're gonna make them pretty. Of course, you guys know how I am about things being pretty. We're gonna put some of these beautiful sprinkles on top. Now, if you are clever and you can find them, it's really fun if you can find the little gingerbread men. I couldn't find any at any of my local grocery stores. so. I'm just gonna have to go with red, white, and green. But if you can find the little gingerbread men, it's really cute for these bars. So we'll let them cool, and then we'll, I'll bring you back, we'll frost them, and then we'll give them a taste. Okay guys, we are all done. Once my bars completely cooled, then I went ahead and frosted them and then put the sprinkles on them. You wanna make sure that you, if you're gonna use sprinkles, that you sprinkle them when your frosting is still soft. And my frosting hasn't set up yet, but I'm trying to wrap up my video here. So um, I just wanted to show you what they look like and how beautiful they are. And they taste amazing. See how pretty? Just delicious give you a close-up you can see how it's nice and moist on the inside so good so that's why you don't want to over bake them if you over bake them then they'll get dry and we want them to be nice and moist um, nobody wants a dry cookie so let's go ahead and give them a taste if you once you um, let your frosting set up some it'll set up enough that you can stack these my, I just finished icing these, so right now my icing is still really soft, but once it crusts up some, you should be able to stack them okay. Um, but anyway, let's give them a taste and see how we did. It smells so good in my kitchen. I just love gingerbread. Really good, you guys. Like I said, that cookie is nice and moist. And then you have that sweet vanilla flavor on top. You'll never miss the cream cheese, I promise. It's a beautiful and tasty cookie and so easy to make. The little gingerbread cutouts are really fun to do. They just take a lot more time. So if you want something that's quicker and easier, but still just as festive, this is the way to go. So I hope you'll give them a try. Thanks so much for coming along with me today, guys. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.